if you're a Latina, you know, come, this is your community. And if you're an ally and you're looking to support Latinas, come, this is your community as well. We need all voices. We need all of us together, unidos, to make this a better world and a better place for the generations to come. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Irvinder, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Majoka from You Do You. Hello, everyone. I welcome you to this episode of I Have Something to Say. I am so excited because we have the founders of United Latinas in the house, Sandra Torres, Ileana Rojas. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much for having us. Excited to be here. Yes. Very excited. Very thrilled. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you too. And we're, it's the, the magic of these platforms now, right? Because I'm here in Orlando. Sandra, you're in South Florida. South Florida. <laughs> and Ileana? I'm in Rhode Island. Yeah, but here we are, right? United Latinas coming together for common vision and a common cause. Uh, and, and really, I feel like there's so much purpose in what we're working on. And I want to first thank you for giving me the honor of inviting me to sit on your board. So I, I just really, I am so grateful because the lineup, what you have lined up is just so powerful. And for me to be able just to, you know, witness such magnificence is just fantastic. And, and to be able to chip in whatever I can, you know, is just really, really an honor, true honor. So thank you. Yeah, we are excited to have you. Your energy is exactly what is part of the essence of what we are. So Yes. And I want to, I mean, you, you both are entrepreneurs and business owners, like boss ladies and the jefas in your home, on your own right. Right. Um, and, and I want to get into how this all came about, but just to ground or anchor this conversation, there are three key pillars, right. That United Latinas are focused on, and it's about building community and a sense of belonging. Right. Um, Increasing visibility, like creating opportunities to expose our talents, right? And then last but not least, develop leadership, right? Or actually further the be develop the leaders that we already have within our midst. And so did I capture that correctly? And if so, correct, if, if not, then correct me. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, we are about empowering, amplifying the voices of Latinas, you know, there, and we'll get into that, I guess, as the podcast goes on about why those are our key pillars, but, um, but absolutely, you captured it perfectly. Okay, great. And so how did you meet and how this whole idea of United Latinas come about? Maybe a little bit of a background, you know, Sandra, if you could share with you, us, you know, your career, your trajectory, your background and how you landed in this space where like you felt the need to, to um, birth, right? Um, United Latinas and then Ileana, the same, right? Like talk to us about the wealth of knowledge and experience from your career, how you transitioned into entrepreneurship briefly, just to, to give us a notion of, you know, your mindset and where you're coming from and then how you guys just bumped into each other and then poof, Right, magic happened. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, and like many Latinas, you know, um, especially in my early twenties, coming up in a professional environment, in a in an office, and and having a position um, that was a high level position at that time as a director of marketing. I mean, that's high level for a Latina in her twenties, right? Um, but it was um, it was a it was a profound set of years that has a, had occurred in there, I realized that being dropped into that position, I was hungry 
for other Latinas to collaborate with, to give me, uh, you know, um, just information and just to be a supportive community at that time. And I didn't have that. You know, the only Latinas within the organizations were what we, the typical jobs were at data entry and, and you know, doing those types of works. And um, I became, I, I did so many things within the organization as a buyer and as a, and all of the marketing. Um, but what I found was um, I really didn't get the community support from other leaders within that organization because they didn't understand my culture. They didn't understand the way I thought and that thought process. And me as a Latina, I needed someone that understood the backstory, right? And I think that that is really what what mattered to me most. I needed somebody that understood my home life, that understood the food I ate, that understood the thinking and the mindset and the baggage that we carried around. So at that time, the only outlet I had was the other Latinas in the office. So I would train, like I trained our receptionist to do my job. I trained her how to negotiate. I trained her how to do purchasing. You know, I, I would train, you know, the ladies that were there because I didn't want to be the only one that was there and was looked at as like, oh, she's, you know, she's got that position um, because I worked alongside the CEO. So regardless of the title, I was the second, I was the one that was spending the money of the organization. Um, but I didn't have the resources that I needed emotionally, right? Emotionally, it, it, there's something so much more than that. So that led me to like seek out, where are the Latinas at? Where can I find mentors for me? I was a young 20 year old. Right, where can I find mentors for me? And I would look and look and we were the typical stereotype, right? We were, when we, I would look in magazines, you know, the, the famous, you know, Latina magazines that were going around, we were, to me, all I saw was stereotypical viewpoints of what we are. We were not, you know, that here's how to get a boyfriend and here's how to look sexy and here's, and those were, I'm like, wait a second, what about our intellect? Man, I need somebody to help me. Like we have, so, like that's not what I'm about. Yes, we we have that as part of our essence, but that's not what we're about. That's not the the sum of our gifts to the world. So that's where it started with me needing me feeling like, man, we need to find a place for us to get together, you know. Um, and then over the years, you know, I was years passed. Um, and then I moved to, to Florida and I, I, I started my business here in South Florida and I would go to networking events. And again, I was the only Latina in the space. If there was another Hispanic individual, it was typically a male. Um, and this was around 2006, 2007, you know, through that era. And I, I just didn't understand why, why are they not coming out? Where are they? You know? And then I realized I looked within and I said, you know what? It, it is because there is a lot of baggage and overcoming in finding our place in society, right? Really mm -hmm. understanding our worth and owning that power that was, that is, and lives within us, right? Really executing on that power. So over the years, you know, that just kind of was a, you know, stint, you know, you have this, this thought and then about um five years ago um I, has it hasn't been five years about 2018 i i said you know what this the time has come the time has come that's it i need to start going out there um and even though it was just at that time it was just me by myself i said you know we need to start this revolution of making sure that we are getting latinas equipped knowledgeable, having a network of professionals, growing as professionals, not just as subpar positions, right, but just as professionals and executives and leaders that we are. So I started putting these groups together that we could meet and just start having these conversations on getting an idea of where their headspace was. You know, how can we start really attracting Latinas uh, to this organization? Um, and then through LinkedIn, and Ileana will, 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 time on this, but um, through the power of networking and LinkedIn, you know, I think we both saw each other and we're looking at, okay, well, this person's doing something, right? She's doing, she's making moves. And I think that that is what sparks within us, right? We look at other people like, okay, you're making moves. You're a doer. You're a go-getter. You know, I want to, I want to collaborate with you. I want to do things with you. And I think that that's the, that was the, that was the beginning. That was the, the yeah. beginning of, 
what flourished into yeah into yeah you you saw Ileana yeah. and then you told each other I want a piece of you I want, <laughs> I want a piece yes of you. and so Ileana so here you are right minding your own business but not really right because you're like in it also right uh and and so talk talk to us right about your trajectory and then that encounter Yes, absolutely. Well, very similar, I think, in, in, in terms of being the only one. Uh, I did 20 years of uh, in, in executive positions in different Fortune 500 companies, uh, leading you know teams, local teams, regional teams, global teams, doing marketing, sales, building new businesses in, in all of these, these companies. And I really had a very thriving and, and successful career uh, through those 20 years, which I loved at the time. Um, and I really had had a good moment. I didn't realize at the time that I was the only Latina. I think I, it, it just it didn't hit me right uh, until there there came a point uh, about five years ago where it became it went from loving the job to it's just a job and you're good at it you you do what you have to do uh, but you're not excited anymore like you're you're in a way dragging your feet to work and I could not understand what was happening um, and and very similar to to the, the feeling that Sandra was saying in terms of you look around and you start to talk to you know your peers and they're not getting you uh, like you're just seeing these blank faces of I, I don't understand why why this is not you know why you're not excited about this uh, and and when you work in a company that has, you know, these amazing products where, where making kids be happy is the best thing that you can do every day uh, and you're not having fun, that to me was a red flag of, okay, like, <laughs> this, is, this is serious. Uh, and that's when it hit me. That's when I realized that I did not have that, that group, that support group that I could relate to that could understand what I was going through. Um, it, I, I really went through a, a very dark moment of my life at that moment in time. Um, I don't think I wasn't, I don't think I hit depression, clinical depression, but I was probably very close to it. Um, and that's when uh, talk starting to reach out to, to people in my past uh, that, I thought got me started and hearing their journey uh, really, I understood that I wasn't, that I was the only one. I wasn't the only one from a gender perspective. Well, I was the only one from a gender perspective, but it wasn't that it was really, I was, I was needing my, my Latina peers that could <laughs> understand that baggage that Sandra talks about, right. That where your family is important, the work is not everything. You can't find that balance because you feel that you need to be superwoman and show up and, you know, be this this person that knows everything that has every solution uh and and that is exhausting that expect the very very high expectation of who you're supposed to be and who you should be it, it really is exhausting in the end but you need to show up um and looking around i started to to build to like sandra says to reach out to to other women that you're like i, I they have their act together they have their lives together i want to be like them and then you start talking to each other and we're all in the same like to the front, we're awesome, right? Like we have it all together. And in the back, we're falling in pieces, right? You're crying in the bathroom, like I can't do it anymore. And you realize yeah. that you're not alone, that you're you're not alone in this journey. But as you connect, as you hear the stories and inspiration, I was like, yes, we can do all of this together. We can hold each other and support each other and cry on each other's shoulders and then cheer each other up. And that made a dramatic, dramatic difference. And that's what I realized that my true purpose was 
not in building, you know, these incredible products and these incredible things because they're, they're amazing. Uh, but it was more about the people side of it and being able to, uh, you know, enable and engage and empower and inspire and cheerlead uh, other people to be the best that they can be uh, and be able to then use my experience and my expertise through building these incredible teams and incredible leaders uh, and, and doing that now full time for is just a part of my role and uh, connecting on LinkedIn. I'm an introvert. So LinkedIn at the time became sort of like the way to start reaching out to people. And, and that's how Sandra and I uh, reached to each other. And we started connecting and building events, uh, you know, one at a time. And then we, you know, each to our own businesses again. And then a couple of months later, it's like, what are you doing? Well, what if we do this next? And okay, and it, it suddenly became sort of like a thing uh, until last year we said like, let's stop this. Like, let's just get on and, <laughs> and do it formally versus just every other month uh, connecting to see how we can, how we can build uh, this incredible group and incredible platform where we recognize and we embrace the magnificence of who we are instead of running away from it or instead of putting it to the side because we want to meet expectations of who we're supposed to be uh, and actually use it as a force of power, uh, as, as our fuel to really be and create the impact that we're meant to be. And, and that's, I think, what we're doing right now. And the future's bright. And I'm so excited. I mean, it's just, it's just so much like my chest right now is, is um, a little bit tight because it, I feel the angst, right? And so just hearing you, I'm like, yeah, I totally get it, right? And you put up this front and in the back, you know, sometimes it's a shit show and it just is what it is. But, you know, you, you try to cope, but just having this, this network and this familia, this platform too, because it's very rich, you have really crafted, right? And designed and re carefully and m with a lot of mindfulness, right? The offerings that United Latinas, now your official, right? Your official badge. We all have that official badge now of being United Latina members and, and participants. And, and you've crafted this, this platform in a way that it's rich, that it's sustainable, that it's growing, that it's nimble also to accommodate, right? The, the, the peculiar situations each and every woman um, is experiencing and that it's also open and accessible to everyone. And so why, how, how did you land on these three, on these three pillars, if you will, like the community, the visibility and the leadership and upskilling, right? Like the, the leadership development. Yeah. So, um, and I love that you brought that point up um, of the, the community because the, uh, you know, at the core is most, the odds are most of the time, most Latina professionals don't have, unless they're part of an organization like United Latinas, don't have other Latina professionals directly in their lives impacting them, unless they grew up in a household that was, you know, but the, the majority of the statistics show that, you know, most Latinas, your, your circle your, of your network, they want what's best for you. They want what's safe for you. So you don't have other empowering Latinas that are saying, go get that go do that. Or, you know, and you don't have family that says go and dream big, right? It was always dream safe. Dream, you have a dream, pero quédate aquí, you know, like be yeah. safe about it. And, you know, I think we get to the point in life where it's like, well, what's, what is safe? You know, like what, what, what is safe if you don't dare to do anything? I mean, who wants to play safe, you know? So um, these pillars really came from the need to want, you know, when we think about what does a Latina need to feel empowered, right? Or what stops a Latina from feeling empowered? And it is the ability to execute your voice, right? That's kind of at the core where it starts. And I think where it started for most Latinas is if, you, if you've been a, Lat a professional for many years, um, 
if and you're part of an executive board or you're part of a leadership team, and most of the time you're probably the only Latina in that leadership team, there's been moments, even me in my in my twenties, where I was afraid to just say something, a thought, an idea that I knew could perpetually change the company exponentially, you know. But sometimes you think, oh, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to sound silly, I don't want to sound dumb, I don't know if that idea is. Is stupid. So, you know, I kept my mouth shut, you know, until I didn't, there are certain things, you know, that I didn't, you know, but so I realized one of the key pillars is to make sure that we get Latinas to get comfortable with executing their voice, their thoughts, their ideas, because that's, what's going to change the world and move the world forward. Right. Is because I think that collaboratively we have immense ability and the heart and soul to really implement changes that are significant and can really make a positive difference in our world. So for me, amplifying the voices of Latinas and making sure that we're not just training Latinas, because I think that that's absolutely the, you know, one of our pillars. We need to get to that point, but we, we want to, and alongside that, we want to make sure that women are using the power of their voice and being comfortable and getting comfortable, right? Because it's not a one-time thing. Right. It, it's we want women to feel comfortable just practicing the art of saying, hey, I have an idea. Hey, I have a thought. You know, let me bring this to the table. You know? And in this Something. community, they have that forum, a safe space to do that without being cut off or judged or because we, we've all been in that position of estoy loca. Is my idea like completely out of this world or completely, you know, mm, not good, meh, you know? But in this, since we've all been there, then there's no, you know, there's no risk in speaking up. And so then it it yeah. exercises that, that muscle, right? Of speaking up, of being able to show up and just say what's on your mind because no one's going to say, esta mujer está loca, right? And, and one of the things that I think it's it's very important that, that we find unique about United Latinas, because we also belong to other organizations. We don't see competition. Like for us, it's we're in it all together. And, and that's why we have all these partnerships with all these in, other incredible organizations that are out there also to empower and inspire Latinos. But I think the uniqueness that we bring that we haven't found in other places is that visibility, right? Like you can go to different places to get that upskilling, uh, which we do as well. Uh, and, and we do it targeted to our different audiences that we have and our different members. Um, we build that community, but definitely that visibility and being able to find the ability to, like Sandra says, you know, speak up and not only within your, your area of influence, but even, you know, get the courage to speak up in public, right? In other spaces, uh, because there is a lot of need. And one of the things that I think stops us uh, and that we have, that we've constantly identified as an issue is we don't see other people like us in these positions of power wherever again we are. So that doesn't give us the the inspiration of I can. Uh, it, it pushes it, it pulls us back. Uh, and so therefore being able to provide this platform so that other Latinas can see, oh, like she can do it. Oh, and there's another, and, and look at her and look what they're doing and the impact that they're creating. Oh, and hearing the story of somebody else, you know, all the things that they went through. And now they're there and they were able to break through and do that. And yes, it was hard, but it's actually similar to my experience. So if they did, like, maybe I can too, right? And it just gives you, again, that, that renewed sense of purpose and inspiration. Uh, and I, that's, that's the kind of, of visibility and empowerment that we want to create through United Latinas, to be able to see others in spaces that you would have otherwise not been able to, to get inspired and get motivated that Si se puede. O sea, we really have incredible uh, Latinas doing incredible things. We might not just have heard of them, and now we will. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's really fantastic. And it's it's so funny that you 
um, say that because we tend to gravitate, right? Or think or, or look at leaders outside of our community. And it's so funny because I just recently, um, someone posted on LinkedIn about, hey, um, and, and he's Latino, hey, we're always quoting, you know, people, you know, and mostly white men, right? Um, because that's kind of like the ideal here in, in our business ecosystems, right? Um, that are, have been the leaders. So that's who we see, right? As um, leadership. And so he pointed out, there's so many quotes from Latin American, right? And giants in our community and here, U.S. Hispanics too, that, you know, look into that. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I saw, I realized, oh my goodness, my email signature had a quote from Steve Jobs, which is a great quote, right? But I'm like, I culpable, culpable, right? Because we do have this community and we need to give visibility to your point, Ileana, right? That's the that's the second pillar to we stand on the shoulders of freaking amazing people, right? Historically, from even pre-Columbine. I'll say we're talking about, right? Um, and so, and so I changed my quote for, for a quote from Frida Kahlo, but anyway, so, but, but that's the point, right? To give visibility that, you know, a giant, right? Within our, our community, Frida, right? Had a lot to say. And so anyway, so I, I love that because then this creates a platform where we can identify other Latinas and say, damn, she's got it going on. And then, then if there, if someone calls and says, Hey, I'm putting together this panel, right. And it could be in a space that's, that does not have representation. We could say, wait a second. I know Sandra, I know Ileana, I know Beatriz, I know, right. Sonia. And let's plug her, let's plug a sister into that space. Right. And really make, make a difference. So I, I love, love, love that. You know, that's funny that you that you said that I have a, a quote for, for a long time of Vince Lombardi on my signature line. And it, it, you know, and it and it tells only tells because like even when I look up Latina quotes, right? And it's it's crazy to I, you know, I have to look up Latina quotes. The majority, with exception to Frida, right? the majority are okay. They are they are not we we they we don't have enough of the intellect shown. Right. And I don't know if that's because of lack of capturing that, is, you know, to, to have it as part of data mm -hmm. or just because Latinas never felt fully expressed or fully able to be, you know, to express themselves in that thinking. Right. I was watching uh, something uh, from like a, an old BC uh, do documentary and just the way women were, you know, that just the way we we we've been in society and how we've been looked at. And I think all of us here, we all have had a white male mentor that really helped us, mm -hmm. you know, along, on all, along our paths. Um, and I think it's more like, like you said, we want to have and support other Latinas. We want to bring out the Latina powerhouses, the thought leaders. Why? Because they show the children and they show us, you know, that if there's, if they can do it, they, it's possible for me. It's not, not out of you know out of reach so yeah yes and, absolutely and one of the things that that we're we're doing going uh now that i hear about the quotes because it just clicked right one of the things that we're doing working very hard to do and sami you're a part of that uh initiative is this book right extraordinary latinas and part of the objective of this book is to highlight extraordinary latinas who have done such amazing things but in that uh, trying to to craft the stories and and get you know uh, to the crux of of all these learnings and these incredible journeys one one of the things that we're doing is actually going to highlight quotes, quotes that all of our authors constantly say, uh, because I don't know, I, I didn't realize that, but now I think we're going to do a campaign on quotes, because I think to your point, we do have incredible quotes, quotes that we live by. Um, 
that we that we constantly say that are true to who we are we just haven't put them out there there's nobody recording them anywhere so now that gives us an idea that all these authors incredible 17 authors that we're going to have in this book that's going to launch now in in march uh we'll make sure that we start putting those quotes out there so when people you know google latina quotes there they are (laughs) There yes. they are. <laughs> that's a really great idea. Powerful things to say. Yeah, that's a yeah, yeah. My my quotes. I already want to ask for forgiveness, use it because I may drop a f bomb or two. But otherwise, I hope I hope they <laughs> they help in some way, shape, or form. And so and so, talk to talk to us about leadership now because that's a big. That's the third pillar, right? Leadership development. And I'm privy to, to, to some of the goodies that are coming up in, term of, in terms of the training sessions, right? And they're so spot on because they are custom made for the Latina experience. I was like, oh my goodness, when you guys sent the outline and you said any comments, I'm like, I, I was like speechless. I was like, how do you know, right, that these are the areas that we need to be focusing on? It's like, duh, because you've been through, been there, done that, right? And so talk talk to us about this leadership pillar, you know, and all of, like, what's planned out. What I love also is that it's already planned out, that it's not... Um, this makeshift thing. It's not disjointed. It's not shooting from the hip. It's set. It's set in stone. It's going to be deployed and it's going to be great. So tell us, give us, give us the goods. This, this program is, is very, um, intentionally and mindfully thought out, like you say, uh, and not only because we're experts in the, in the topic and you could say we're certified coaches and things like that. No, it really is because we've been there, done that. <laughs> we've gone through the experience of the, the typical barriers that are stopping Latinas from being good leaders to moving to being extraordinary leaders. Right. And, and leadership is something that, that people don't teach you. You're suddenly like told, oh, now you have you, you're in this leadership position. You're supposed mm. to lead how many people. Right. And, and you're supposed to know how to do it. And nobody teaches you that. Uh, and that causes a big issue of self-confidence because. When it doesn't start happening, when you start to struggle, because, you know, we will, um, then you start feeling like guilty and like ashamed, like I should know this, I should be able to do this, and, and it's not happening. So all of those feelings, all of those inner critic voices, all of those experiences, all, all of those things were taken into consideration for this program to say, what are the, the those key things that constantly we see uh, Latina, Latina leaders struggling with at any level, right? Mm-hmm. You can be at entry level, you could be at a C-suite level, and you're still struggling. Uh, and that's what we decided to put into this program, because there's there's many things that you can tackle in a leadership program. There's, you know, tons of leadership programs that you can see out there, but we really were very intentional into identifying what are the, the key things for Latinas that are that make them struggle and that we can help them and provide them the tools, the tactics, the strategies, so that through this six week, this the six session program, they can go through it, they can embrace it, they can understand it, they can recognize it, and they can turn it around and say, oh, that's the reason why. Because when you see it, then you can't unsee it. Then you realize, Oh, of course, that was the thing that I was missing, right? That's the little thing. But you need somebody to come and and let you know what it is so that you can then embrace it and and become the extraordinary Latina leader that that you're meant to be. Uh, So those are the the things that we're going to focus on, which has to do with mindset. If we don't believe in ourselves, if we don't shift our mind to become a, you know, a true leader uh, in, in our right and in, in who we, sh- we are supposed to be, it's going to be very hard. So we're going to help in that transformation. 
in how to advocate for ourselves. A lot of us do not advocate for ourselves porque calladita te ves más bonita, right? <laughs> so it's how do we do it without feeling like we're bragging, without feeling like, you know, we're we're showing off. How do we do it authentically and feel good about it? Um, we're going to talk about personal branding and presence, leadership presence. How do we how do we show up and command the room versus going in and to the back and like hiding and I hope nobody sees me and I'm, I'm going to sit back here. No, like how do you command the room and, and influence the room and have people see you not for the Latina, you know, but for who you are and for the impact and the worth and the value that you bring. Um, and then being able to do the, the, in the end, have that, those speaking uh, skill sets, right? And of, of speaking in public. And this doesn't mean, you know, you have to go to your next TEDx talk in, in front of 10,000 people. It's just being able to have the confidence, build the confidence to, to, to speak to an audience, be it in your office, be it in, with your team, uh, being, you know, delivering a presentation or standing in front of 10,000 people, you still need the same kind of skills. So being able to understand that, uh, what does it take to, to feel that, that um, confidence to speak up? So those are like the things that we'll be tackling in this first um a leadership program. We have more to come, but that's sort of like, we do, we believe that if we don't have those foundational skills, it's going to be very hard uh, to, to continue to feel like you are the leader that you're meant to be. That That is just so deep and so dope. Both things. I, st I stole your <laughs> expression. Sandra, that's so deep and so dope. And so we're going to make sure to include you know, the information and all of the links and everything when we, you know, share um, this episode because it's so important, right? And so if you know a Latina that you know um, is holding back, you know, and is not um, standing in her true power and just owning it, please, please, please. You know, let her know that there's that there's this community that that you know is very giving and generous and loving and supportive. You know, and there's a cost obviously associated with you know participating in this program, but I feel it's just completely accessible. It's totally accessible and it's an investment. So you know, just don't buy the shoes for a couple of months, right? And and you know, cook and home. buy this and buy this. Yeah, and that's buy what you're this, buying. right? Invest <laughs> in this and in this mm -hmm. too, because there's a yeah. lot of this in it in it too. So and and also the the relationships that you know are developed through building this community of trust and being able to know that what you know that you're supported by people that may help fill in you know, those gaps that you feel that you have, and then you learn something new and all of a sudden, voila, you know, time goes by and it's like, oh, what? oh my God, I learned a new skill. And now you're able to also support other people within your circle. So I think it's a, it's a wonderful, a wonderful thing. And so what is your, what is your vision? Like, cause I know, you know, you've been working on this independently and then together for the last five years, you know, and now it's like official, but I know how, I know how meticulous you both are with the things that you do. And so, you know, um, I know that it, it took a minute to put this together because you wanted to come out, right. You didn't want to look to be, look, you know, disheveled and just not right. And so I can only imagine that your goals and your vision um, is very audacious. And so I want to know, I want to know, how, what do you see? What's the vision uh, for United Latinas um, as, as now you kick this year off, you know, and uh, look forward to, to the future? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll share. Um, I mean, we have big visions, right? We want to impact more Latinas globally, right? Because we understand, especially all of us here, we understand the root of the problem and where we all came from, that point of um, uncertainty to certainty, right? So I, we, we want to impact, you know, 
tens of thousands of Latinas um, throughout this year, you know, whether they're attending our events, joining as members, but our goal is to reach women globally and really help change the, the narrative and, and the landscape, right? Part of um, some of the things that really are at the core of what Latinas are is because of lack of a lot of Latina leadership, right? You can't just, you know, there there is a lack of Latina leadership we want to make sure that we are supporting that mission because I believe change happens at the top, right? So it's not just equipping women with the tools to live fulfilling lives. That is at the very core. All of us want to live fulfilled lives. We want to be happy. Identifying what fulfillment is. What is that? What does it mean to live? Do I want to make quedo callita en casa? Or am I a goal cutter and I'm going to go and, and do something to change the world? I believe that there are a lot of women that because they don't have communities of other Latinas that are helping them think differently, think broader, se quedan. And you know what? I feel that because of that, we don't have enough Latinas owning the courage to feel that they can progress in, not just in their career, but also in, in, in governments in really the, where change happens, right? Because I'm a big advocate that I believe that if we get enough Latina leaders, enough of them will have the bravery to go run for office locally at a local level or at a grand level. And I believe that that is ultimate, that is my underlying secret <laughs> selfish goal. I wanna see Latinas running things in places that really impact communities so that we could have better whole more loving, more heartfelt, and more, you know, just positive communities. Yeah. Um, and we're starting to see it. I mean, it is a very bold vision and, and it, it's very, uh, ner you know, nerving, but it's also exciting, but we're already seeing it, right? We were all together uh, right now back in December uh, in this really important place where, where top Latino leaders were in the house, driving change, thinking about how to create big impact. And we were looking around the room of 600 leaders and you could see, oh, there's a United Latina. Oh, there's another, you like, we're still not like in the crux of, of making this happen. And we were already looking around the room. We could, you know, get a good group of United Latinas that were in that room of the six uh, of 600 of the, of the most influential Latina le Latino leaders uh, in the nation. Right. So that's exciting uh, that that our vision, our vision is really it's long term, but it's already happening and we're already yeah. seeing that come through. And, and that just makes us so exciting. I think we're going to have to think even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Hey, it is very palpable, right? You can touch it. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can, you, you can, exp you can experience it now. So I, I agree with you. And so, hey, listen, go big or go home, right? That's the motto. That's the motto. And you know what? It's Latinas of all levels, right? Because whether you're early to mid career looking for a leadership, you know, to really gain leadership skills or whether you're seasoned, right? I have, I'm in the point of life changing that this is the decade of just life changes, right? So I, you know, there are women like me that still, I need this community. I need to know other Latinas get me, they understand me and at, at my level and at higher levels, you know, um, so it's Latinas of all levels, right? We can only, always need resources. Yes, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been such a gift to share this time with you and to get all of this information and to share these experiences and hear you out because it's like, it makes me be able to breathe a little more comfortably, right? Knowing that I'm not alone. And, uh, and, and I want to thank you. Thank you for your leadership and for sharing all of this, right? And for investing your time, energy, resources into creating this as, as a gift really to society, because I, I feel like, I feel like the powers of be that be, don't realize what's about to happen, right? What what's about to happen when when we are able to um, work together to make these changes, right? And to develop, you know, Latinas and and they're able to start embedding themselves 
and growing in, in their leadership roles um, across industries and across, you know, um, government positions and just um, uh, making making a, a big difference and being more present. And so um, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing. And I'm so, so I'm just thinking of my abuela, right? Could you imagine if my abuela was running this country? Oh, my God. It's like, you know, God bless her. She, you know, she's already passed, but she would have, she would have whooped everybody into place, right? <laughs> Pero con cariño, right? And she would have fed everybody, right? She didn't have much, but the oyong en la casa was always ready to feed anybody that walked in that door, right? Because she had her priorities straight, right? People need to get fed. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. I'm just so thankful um, to both of you. And uh, I, I, I know this is not going to be uh, the last of, of our conversation. So thank you. Thank you both uh, for, for being here today. Thank you. And a call to thank action. You so much for if you're us. a Latina, you, if you're a Latina, you, you know, come. This is your community. And if you're an ally and you're looking to support Latinas, come. This is your community as well. We need all voices. We need all of us together, unidos, to make this a better world and a better place for the generations to come. Amen. I'll do that. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned answers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Urbander, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You.